All the time I see people making maps for D&D and stuff, and usually they start off with an outline of the coast, then they add some mountains and some rivers and some forests and some deserts, then maybe they add a couple cool features like a big volcano. I don't know, I don't really buy that stuff. I kind of like the way the Skyrim map does it where the foundation of the map is its coasts, mountains, and rivers, and then all this stuff is kind of built from that and on top of it. So today we're going to look at the shape of Skyrim, its coasts, its mountains and rivers, and how these things kind of create regions that when overlapping and interacting with each other, keep it interesting and exciting no matter where you're looking. So anyways, this is how Skyrim originally looked in the Elder Scrolls 1 arena. I think it's kind of lame, so we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on how it looks in the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, because everyone knows that in this map is honestly dope as hell. And I think this will be useful for world building because... If you wanted to make, a, let's say, a D&D map that just had one country kind of like the Elder Scrolls does it, this would be the way to go. So first of all, let's look at Skyrim in Tamriel. It's the very most northern point, and it looks kind of just like this potato looking thing that's sacked in between all these other ones. First, let's go over the provincial borders, because these are all provinces in one big empire. The provincial borders, it borders High Rock, Hammerfell, Cyrodiil, and Morrowind. It has these little grooves, these little notches here between each one that make it look like these are natural borders for these places because all you really have to go off of are the mountains, the coasts, and the borders themselves. And I mean, you can kind of infer that the border here is because of the mountains. Having this little notch in the coastline makes it so that you could draw the border from here and it'll look totally natural. So now let's move on to the country itself and how the rivers and the borders interact to be interesting. Oh, and I, I hear so many of you saying, Oh, but Skyrim's not a country. And it will be. And now the Empire is going to put you down. So the first thing let's talk about is High Rock and this little branch of Skyrim here. It looks like High Rock should own it because it goes, it's part of the same ridge, basically. And I know it's not really the mountain ridge, but it's the same ridge. And I think that's accomplished by the coast flows into the river here, you know? You see, it, it looks like it's a natural, like, boundary to this ridge right here. This looks like it would be the High Rock border. And this is what Skyrim would look like if High Rock owned this part. And honestly, I hate this so much because one, there's no motion. It looks like it just has weight on the bottom. It lacks weight on the top to give it a kind of motion to it, you know? It just looks like a sack of potatoes. And the only lines that I could construct for it are just going down here. And the thing is, there's nothing to contest that. Anyways, so that's how this river serves to make it look like High Rock should go over here. And I think it's interesting that it doesn't because it's a visual inconsistency between the two in terms of its borders. And the border still looks good. I'm not, I mean, I don't like the shape of High Rock, but that's another video itself. Visually, High Rock, it looks like High Rock has claim to this land but Skyrim has it, and that kind of just creates the idea that there's content that explains why this part is given to Skyrim. So let's move on to over here, because this river does the same thing. The coastline just flows into the river here. I'm not saying that this part right here should be owned by Morrowind. The mountain chain works as a border much better than the river does, but I'm just saying that the coast flows into the river, and I think that's because there's no exact place where the coastline and the river like stop and meet up and everything. I mean, I think the best place to like jump over the river while tracing the coast would be over here. If you wanted to look at Skyrim without the Morrowind part, it would look like this. And to be honest, this shape is kind of sick, I think. This kind of just simplifies what's cool about the Skyrim shape. Uh, the skeleton of it would be like this right here. This shape is obviously wider than that shape. The connection between them doesn't have straight lines, and that's what's really important. It kind of like pinches in. Another thing is that it keeps the, the, the motion of it, where it just goes from being high to going down lower, you know? And I think that that's important. And if you wanted to see what it looks like without either of them, like that, that would just be a country that I would look at and say, okay, I'm not interested at all because there's, I mean, you could say that it comes and goes here to he end here. But, you know, I, I don't think that's strong enough. There's, there's no motion to it. I see it as a blob. And I mean, you know, it's just kind of like a circle 
with a thing sticking out of it. And I don't think that's interesting enough. If I were to choose the shape of Skyrim, it would have to be this, or it would have to be the real shape. So now we're getting into the real meat. So this is the Skyrim map that we all know and love from the video game, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. <laughs> I have an idea about maps like this where it's important to visually split the map into regions. The idea here is that if you use components that are part of the foundation of the map to make interesting geographical regions in different parts, there'll be a baseline diversity that keeps every part of the map unique and interesting. This map doesn't deal with stuff like forests or biomes, so all you really have to go off before you start plopping towns down are the coasts, the rivers, and the mountains. So the region should be made of those. Now, real maps don't do this, but we're some artistic boys. So it's best if you can't find clear-cut regions in your map because real places don't have that kind of stuff. So having ambiguity as to what's a region and where they meet is key. The first region that stands out to me are the rivers. And I think that would be for a lot of people too, just because of how dominant they are on this map. I consider that there are three big rivers. This one over here in the Reach, the White River, which comes down all the way over here, and the Dark Water River that comes down over here. I think, obviously, the first region you would think of is the big one right here, right in the middle, because there's nothing that's that carves it up on the inside. The second of all, you have this like sliver over here that would be another region uh, that's created by the rivers. And this is actually reinforced by the mountains of the Reach and Markarth, which are on the side of the rivers, and how the color of the river itself is darker down here than this river. So I would consider these two to be regions themselves, you know? With the rift in East March, just the eastern part of Skyrim, and then the southern part with the throat of the world, simply just divided by this line. But if you wanted to say that these two are the same region or these two are the same region that would make sense because i mean you can totally say that this region and this region are separated by more than this region and this region but personally i think that this has two separate regions the only thing is where do they start and stop now that's really important because it's ambiguous. The first thing that's important to note is where the rivers point. So over here, Lake Illinalta and the end of the Karth River on this map, not in the game, point to each other. This region would just stop right here on the map. But that still opens the question of where does this region and this region stop. And it doesn't need to be answered, that's the thing. Ambiguity makes it look more realistic because the real world doesn't have regions like this, you know? Let's look at if you turned Lake Illinalta like this and this pointed this way. So I think it would be kind of obvious that the big region would go up until here. Although like, how does that interact with this? I think it makes it a little awkward because you don't know if it stops there. You don't know if it stops over here. You know, it's just weird. So honestly, I do like that Lake Illinalta is pointing at the Karth River because it makes it kind of obvious where this region would end. But like I said, ambiguity is really important, such as where does this Throat of the World region interact with this region with the Rift and East March? Is it over here with Rift? And I would say so, but you know, you could say that it's over here with the Ural Mountains. Stuff like that. Could you consider these two things to be regions just because they're separated by rivers? I think they're too small for the scope of these regions. But because it does separate into smaller and smaller regions, it creates more ambiguity as to what these regions actually are. And no one is thinking of this stuff out loud, but I think people do it subconsciously. And that's what's important. You want them to subconsciously divide these places into regions, but have those regions be ambiguous. Now, that's just the rivers. Take what I said about that kind of stuff and now apply it to the mountains and the basins. The yellow are the mountains and the green are the basins where like the tundra, the plains, that kind of stuff is. Just from playing it, Whiterun is my city. Hell yeah. On the map, you can totally see that there are basins in this. The White Run basin, like all this, subconsciously gets put into one category because it's contrasted with the mountains. And one of the biggest things is the White Run basin, which is like dead center and like the biggest one, is emphasized, it is emphasized, by the Lone Mountain here. That's one powerful tool, I think, when it comes to making this kind of stuff with the mountains. Obviously, these basins are questionable, but it works rather well. It's just another way to have regions that is not with the rivers. So having the rivers on top of this makes it work 
even more, because you can see how some of the rivers interact with it. Like the Karth River goes through the mountains out into this basin. The White River exists in this basin, although it does go through these mountains, and the Throat of the World has a lakeside view. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's basins and mountains and rivers. It's kind of ex like expected what would happen. It's just going through the basins, which the mountains are surrounding, you know? But the mountains and basins undermine the regions created by the rivers. One could correctly pit everything from Rorik's Dead to Eastmarch as one region because it's one long basin, but the rivers say differently. A good map like this layers these aspects on top of each other to create more ambiguity, and because they're overlapping regions, they're made more interesting. This whole basin is one thing, but the eastern half of it has rivers and ponds, while the western half is flat with a single mountain. It makes the map more interesting and more diverse without actually adding interesting features. And once you do that on top, it becomes much cooler. And lastly, I want to talk about the holds. So these are the holds that are set up by this map. Um, they have these little red dotted lines here. The holds are the weakest form of layering on the map because they just overlay other features. They do, however, bring in different features that otherwise wouldn't be associated with each other, which creates the idea that there is content that explains this. Like, why would the Throat of the World be a part of Whiterun if it's on the other side of the river and not in the basin? Who knows? It just helps to reinforce different regions. So that goes way, way too deep into the analytics of this, of the Skyrim map. Now let's go a little, just a tiny, let's dip our toes into the, the lore of it a little bit. So Solitude, we all knew this was coming. Solitude is the Imperial base in the Skyrim Civil War in-game. The Imperial City and Cyrodiil are the heart of Imperial power. The Empire basically looks like this nowadays. You know? Black Marsh, different. These two, Aldmeri Dominion. And Hammerfell is its own thing. And Morrowind's just like screwed over, so we really don't care about it. Please tell me. This is Solitude. This is the Imperial City. What the flip-flop nickety knock is going on over here? And I know, I know the lore reason is that it's easier to get stuff out here and around here and stuff. Yes, that makes sense. However, don't you see <laughs> that there are two powers which hate the Empire that th like whose waters it has to go through to get to it. The Old Mary Dominion is not gonna let Imperial cargo go past for the Skyrim Civil War, especially because they want the Civil War to split Skyrim up. That's why you Stormcloaks are so fucking stupid. Because over here, where is it? There is Pale Pass. Pale Pass. Now this place is featured in Oblivion, and there's the Serpent's Trail that it goes through. And I will admit, it's a dangerous cave, I think, if my memory serves me right. However, it has been 201 years since Oblivion, and the Empire is based on Rome, and Rome had a lot of big engineering things. Why the flip-flop schnibbity bip bop top would they not clear out Pale Pass to have cargo come in through Falkreath or Helgen? Tell me that. Because I know it's difficult to lug stuff over mountains, but that is a hell of a lot easier than going around into enemy waters and then to solitude. And by the way, usually northern seas are just really violent. Just keep that in mind. They would have done pale pass. Let me tell you why I think solitude was chosen. In game, they wanted the, the province to be split in half. So this could be Stormcloak and this could be Empire. Because they didn't they didn't want it to be they didn't want it to be like, oh, this is Imperial, and this is Stormcloak, because that's not as simple, and Skyrim loves to be simple. Another thing is, it would kind of show that Falkreath could exert control over Windhelm through the river, just on the map. Even though there's like a million waterfalls up on here. <laughs> that's why water transport in this doesn't flipping work, just because there's so many goddamn waterfalls. Let me put up a map of just what Skyrim looks like, just in-game, with all the waterfalls on here. Onto Whiterun, my city cool. So Whiterun is the middle of Skyrim, and that's what makes it the trade hub of it. My question is, does everything get transported by carriage? Because of all the, the waterfalls in the rivers, it has to be transported by carriage. So, I mean, it does make sense Whiterun would be like the trade place. I do like that, that this is the neutral zone because it's like, oh, this is a big deal. It has all the trade. It's the very middle, all that kind of stuff. But you know, I, I kind of just wish that they made rivers that were navigable, at least like up to Whiterun, so that they could trade with Windhelm. Speaking of Windhelm, I think 
it should be a big trade thing just because it's on the river plus i mean windhelm is right on the edge of morrowind which we all oh wait also it looks like a pig look at that beautiful Hey everyone, if you got this far, you must have enjoyed the video at least a little bit, so thanks for watching. The next video is twisting my nipples profusely, so I think making this was a good break to take. But I also wanted to make this for a long time, so yeah.